What's up Moto Buddies, Mike here from Taco Moto Co. In this video, we'll show you how to install the GET SX1 family of hardware on the Austrian bike platform. So that would be a KTM, Husqvarna, or Gas Gas motorcycles. If you're installing the race kit, you'll have the ECU and the toggle map switch. If you're installing the pro kit, you'll have the ECU, a Wi-Fi module, LED map switch, and a Y cable. Step one is to remove the seat. Next, remove the five bolts that hold on the tank. This is the first. The two here for the radiator shouds. Final two on the other side. Disconnect the fuel pump power connector. Disengage the fuel tank connector quick disconnect. Tank vent hose. Grab your tank and lift it off the bike. Remove your OEM ECU. Pinch the connector here. Plug in the GET ECU. Your ECU may have three connectors. One will be labeled EXP. This will go to a traction control knob or a toggle map switch. If you have neither on your installation, this will be unused. You'll have a main if you're using the Wi-Fi connector or the LED map switch through the Y cable. You'll use this connector. If you're not using those, this will not be used. And this other one, the two prong here, this is for a second injector. If you don't have that on your bike, this will not be used either. For the map switch, if you're using the toggle type map switch, you'll connect the two bullet connectors together. They are uh, self-polarity locating, so female to male, etc. Toggle map switch will connect into the EXP. If you're using the LED map switch, you'll use the Y cable that will connect into the main connector. And you will connect the female side of the connector into the ECU. Your ECU may also have the LED map switch and the Wi-Fi controller. These have male connectors at each end of those, and you can plug them into either side of the female connector here on this Y cable. There's no difference between the two. Either one is fine. Here you could see everything connected. With either map switch, the cable will route along the bars and behind the triple clamp. Here I have the Y cable connected to the Wi-Fi module already. I'm going to connect this to the ECU. The other end of the Y cable, it'll run up here to the bars, and I'll feed this down here through the opening of the bike, the frame. Note that this Y section uh, is gonna go in two directions. One side of it is gonna feed up to the front of the bike, the other side is gonna feed back here to the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna take this and feed it through this little bracket here, plug it into the map switch, and I'll take back some of this cord. I don't wanna take too much back though. I need to make sure that when I move the bars, nothing gets pinched and there's enough slack so I don't stretch anything. When you route your cable along the harness, make sure that you get everything tucked in. We don't want to have any of this pinched by the seat. Use cable ties as needed to secure your harness. Find a spot to tuck the Wi-Fi module in. At this point, the installation of the hardware is done. Double check your work. Make sure all the harnesses are tucked away. Nothing's gonna get pinched in body panels or the seat. And reinstall the gas tank. Here's a pro tip. When you put that fuel tank back on, the hose, the fuel line hose, is gonna go right through this little cavity right here. Also make sure to not pinch the power connector underneath the tank. Reconnect the fuel line hose. It's a good idea to make sure it's clean and also put a little bit of grease on the o-ring. Reattach the bolts of the tank and don't forget the horn. It's now time to start the bike. I like to prime the fuel pump at least once. Your Taco Moto Get ECU system ships with two maps loaded in and it's plug and ride ready. If your bike starts, idles, and runs smooth, you're good to go. Go out and enjoy your new Get ECU system. Part two of this video will cover higher functions. Some riders want to have a factory level installation. They want to set the TPS, they want to set the idle. These are the steps for that. 
To calibrate the TPS sensor in the GET ECU, we first need to make sure that our throttle plate is completely closed. KTM uses a dual knob arrangement on their throttle bodies. The red knob here is for the idle, and then the yellow is the cold start choke knob. A couple of things to point out on this throttle body are the yellow knob. This is the cold start knob, and when it's pressed in, it engages a cam that gaps the throttle here, and so our throttle plate is slightly open. This basically simulates cracking the throttle when starting. You disengage that by pulling the yellow knob all the way out. You'll see that gap uh, was closed out there, and so that's in the closed position. Now, to get our zero completely set, we need to turn out the red knob, and we'll do that while at the same time we are activating our throttle, and you're gonna listen for a sound change. Right now, we have steel on steel, and that has a particular sound. But as we turn this a little more, at a certain point, we're gonna engage, the cam is gonna hit the throttle body itself. And that sound change is when it's completely closed. Listen to the difference again, not closed, completely closed. Once you've ensured the throttle plate is completely closed, it's time to energize the ECU to put it into programming mode. We need to gain access to the diagnostic port on the new generation bikes. It lives under this little dust hood right here. The Gas Gas and Husqvarna bikes will have them in different locations, but you're gonna basically find this connector here in its different location. There's a little plastic tab, a release tab on the back. Once you depress that, this will pop out and then you can also release the cover to expose the terminals. Taking a look at this connector, you'll see that there's a little latch tab at the top. The far left, the upper left would be position one. Down here we have pin four and five. One way to energize the ECU is to use a little piece of safety wire, jumper wire, paper clip, whatever, and you can poke that carefully into those two terminals. You'll hear that the ECU uh, fired up, the fuel pump energized, that wakes up the ECU. That's one way to power it. Another way is to use the wake-up dongle. We provide these. You can also get these on some of the KTM two-stroke models. These are used to prime the oil pump. If your kit came with this reset TPS power cable, you can plug this into the main connector here on the ECU and then attach the red and black to the positive and negative on your battery. This will provide battery power direct to the ECU as well. This is only installed for programming and then removed when you're done. Another method to wake up the ECU is to blip the start button. Notice the check engine light will come on. I'm gonna just press that momentarily. Check engine light latches on. Also the, uh, the LED map switch will light up. Uh, the ECU is now awake, powered, and in program mode, and it will stay in that mode for three minutes. To set the TPS using the app, we need to make sure that we have reliable power to the ECU. Our favorite method is to use the wake-up dongle. If you don't have that though, the second best thing to use is the paperclip method. Again, using these bottom two pins here on the lower left side of the connector. The first step to use the Athena app is to download it from your app store. It's called the YGET app by Athena. Download that, you'll see this icon here once it's downloaded to your phone and we need to then sync the ECU to the bike. So we do that by opening up our settings and then we find Wi-Fi. This will populate and we're looking for the Wi-Fi com. Touch that. Next step is we need to enter the password. The password is the PSW number. That's found on the back of the Wi-Fi module. Some Wi-Fi comms also come with an auxiliary sticker. Again, it's the PSW number. It's handy if you take this sticker and you put it somewhere on the bike that you'll be able to uh, access if you ever needed to find that Wi-Fi number again. You could also use a label maker and make a sticker and also place that somewhere under the seat for handy convenience. Note that the light on the Wi-Fi comm is on showing it's got power. We need to enter that password in. We'll enter that number here. And we're now connected. Something to point out is we are syncing the phone to the bike. The Wi-Fi is just a communication method to connect the two wirelessly. We're not connecting to the internet, we're connecting the phone to the bike. Now that we're connected to the phone, we'll open the YGET app. And notice up here, this little yellow blinking light. This means it's searching for the Wi-Fi comm. It's found it. We want to import that, so we'll say OK. And it's going to ask us if this is a vehicle that we'd like to connect to, and we'll hit OK. Here we'll select the bike. This happens to be a 25 KTM 500 EXCF. Engine size is 500. And then the version will be an Enduro. 
uh, you'll have motocross, enduro, street. Really, motocross and enduro are the only two bikes, generally the four-stroke bikes, that you'll select from. And so this is a plated headlight bike. That's an enduro model. And everything is fine there, so would it okay. Once the Wi-Fi comm has found the bike, everything is synced together, you'll see that this uh, shows color. If you had any other motorcycles connected to the bike, they'd be grayed out like they are here. Uh, here's a pro tip. Up here on the upper left-hand side, you'll see these little three bars. If you touch that, we'll go to the Settings tab. And here, we want to do a couple of things. First of all, we're in the U.S., and so we're going to set our units to Imperial as opposed to Metric. And then I like to set our TPS calibration mode to Expert, so you would touch that and you would go from easy to expert mode. Those two settings make a difference when we go to further steps. To get out of that screen, we're gonna to touch this little motorcycle guy in the upper left, and we'll go back to this vehicle. So from this screen, we'll press the monitor tab, and over here, we are gonna set that TPS, so we'll touch this little gear wheel in the upper right-hand corner, and we're ready to calibrate the TPS, so we'll press that. Calibrate TPS here, and we're ready to do the zero, so I'm gonna press that and I have not touched the grip at all. Notice it says throttle at 0%. So now I'm gonna send that to the ECU. I'll press that button and it's updating and loading that information into the firmware of the ECU. And we're good there. Showing, notice that shows 0%. So now I'm gonna do 100% throttle. So I'll touch the gear again. And I touch calibration, calibrate TPS. This time I'm gonna hold the throttle grip wide open 100% and I'm gonna press that 100% button while holding the grip, and it has locked that data, and now I'm gonna send it to the ECU. So I'll press Update ECU. I've got the grip held while this is all happening, and it's done. I can release, I can hit OK. And so notice here, this number, 0% with it closed, 100% with it wide open, and that means our full range sweep has been adjusted and locked into the ECU. So for using the app to set our TPS, we have one really nice convenience. We can watch that zero throttle number, and I'm gonna start turning the red idle screw knob uh, clockwise, and I'm engaging that, and I'm gonna turn that to about 3%. 3% is the good value that we'll need to start the bike. So I'm gonna fire up the machine. And notice here that we're at about 1900 RPM, which is basically right where we wanted to be. So I can touch this monitor one tab, and I can see all the live data that's coming from the bike. There's my RPM, so that's my tachometer. It, it bounces around, but you'll see it kind of averages around 1900, 1800 to 1900. It's normal for it to dance around. I just kind of want to capture that average. 3%. That means that the throttle plate is open from true zero, about 3%, to get us 1,900 RPM. And you can just scan this other data right here if you'd like to check in to see what's going on with the other stuff. But at that point, we are done. We have set the TPS, zero and 100%, and we've set our idle speed. Noting that our check engine light is on, meaning our ECU is powered up, we're going to depress the kill switch. This is the method to set the zero TPS without using the Wi-Fi. Don't touch the throttle at all. Hold that for seven seconds. After seven seconds, release, and you're done. Now that we have the zero set on the TPS, we're gonna take our red idle knob here, which you can see on the top of the throttle body, and we're gonna start turning it in counterclockwise, which is driving the screw down and slowly opening the throttle plate. We'll turn that screw while we are cranking the bike. It'll take three or four turns before the bike will start to fire, and once it's running, then we're going to use our tack, either in the app or a separate tack, to determine our idle speed on the 500. Uh, minimum idle is 1800 to 1900 RPM. I'm turning the idle screw in while I'm cranking. There's a few ways to calibrate your idle speed. One of them is to use something like a Trailtech TTO. This is a TAC hour meter. This will not only register RPM, but also engine hours. You can wrap that red wire around your spark plug wire. And uh, they, quite a few of these are made by different manufacturers. This happens to be a good one that we like. On your app store, there is an app available that we use very often to check engine RPM. It's called engine RPM. You can download that to your phone. There's a small fee for it, and it does a great job of registering your RPM 
to the phone. If you're using the LED map switch, the up position, the top map is one, race mode, and then this bottom switch here energizes map two, which is the softer enduro map. You can toggle in between the two maps, whether you're using the LED or the toggle switch, on the fly, at any RPM, at any speed. The lower left button is traction control. The lower right button is quick shift. To engage quick shift, you just press the button and the light will illuminate. And it can be selected in either map at any time. You can turn it on or off and it stays on or off in either map. With quick shift enabled, it allows you to up or down shift from second gear up whether it's in either map. The lower left button is traction control. We can check and see what level of traction control we have applied to either map independent. So if I'm here on map one, I can touch that for a second and it'll show me that zero, the green around the outside is zero. I'd like to see how much traction control I have applied to map two. I can touch the same thing and it's zero. Most riders like to have zero on map one, which would be a race map. They don't want any traction control influence on the race map. However, a lot of riders prefer to have maximum traction control on map two. So if I engage map two and I hold the switch for just a second or two, you will see that it'll blink that zero. And so I'm gonna to start to push the number up. I'm gonna go all the way to 10, I'll go to nine. And then when I press to the 10th mode, H for high. And so now traction control light stays lit because I have a value engaged into that second position. And if I touch that for a second, it'll flash high. So now that I've programmed uh, H level to map two, I can press the button and it engages. So now it's engaged on and you saw it flash, flash H for high. And if I'd like to look and see what I had there on map one and I press that, it shows zero. And notice that the light does not toggle on. There's no traction control to engage and so the light just automatically turns itself off. If you're using the toggle map switch, map position one, which is up, is the race map. And then when you toggle it down, that's the enduro mode, which is the softer map. That's map position number two. If the map switch is unplugged, the ECU will default into map one. This doesn't need to be on the bars. Some riders like to put it here behind the headlight mask. You can zip tie it uh, anywhere that you find convenient. You can also install that underneath the seat. If your ECU is equipped with the round traction control knobs, you'll see that there's a number here inside of that window and that corresponds to the level of traction control. You can turn the knob at any point, at any RPM, at any speed to engage traction control at different levels. Zero would be effectively off and then maximizing it out, turning it all the way to 10 would be maximum engagement. Thank you for your purchase of the Takamoto Get ECU system. If you have any questions, please leave them below. You can also reach out to us through email, text, or phone calls. The number and contact information will be in the notes below. Like, subscribe, go out, get some adventure.